Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, it's really a pleasure to present here, and I married it. I appreciate the invitation. Uh, so this is climate change mitigation policies, aggregate and distribution effects. And this is a joint work with uh, Zaina Hasna, who is a PhD student in Cambridge. She's about to graduate, and she did a terrific job in the paper joining the IMF. Uh, and Cesar Santos, who is a, a long-term co-out of mine, and who is also in DC, he's working now in the Inter-American Development Bank. Okay, so let's go uh, straight kind of uh, to the question, the point, the motivation. Uh, first of all, uh, I think most of us, we would agree that uh, uh, climate change is probably one of the most pressing problems of our lifetime now. At least the scientists would agree with that. And basically, the main driver of climate change is carbon emission, right? Uh, whenever we produce, whenever you consume, these generate emission. And this is a typical what we say is an externality, right? Because whenever we, you know, we produce and we consume, we don't take into account the effects of carbon emission, carbon concentration on the atmosphere. And this is uh, a little bit different from the typical externality because this is a spatial externality and also temporal externality. In spatial in the sense that when one country, there is a mission in one country, this is going to affect the climate of another country. And temporal externality because uh, the mission today is going to affect the mission, uh, sorry, carbon concentration and for the climate uh, of future generation that are not born yet, right? So in general, what we do uh, to correct externality or to address the problem of externality, we introduce what is called a PIGO carbon tax or a PIGO tax here. And PIGO was also an economist at Cambridge. And this is exactly what we are going to do, right? So we are going to introduce uh, a carbon tax. And the complication of that is that there are, you know, economic effects. Whenever we are going to tax the energy sector, there is going to be, you know, a location of resource and so on. And, and then the question is, what are the, the, the economic consequences of, of, of basically this carbon tax? And that is exactly what uh, we are going to address. And... Uh, so we are going to look not only at the aggregate effects, think about this as GDP, you know, aggregate consumption, but we also want to investigate the effects of the distribution effects of this carbon tax and also how the different sectors are affected uh, by this tax. And uh, this is not a very new question. People have looked at this. Uh, William Nordhaus won uh, the Nobel Prize in 2018, basically on his work about, you know, trying to estimate uh, uh, the, the effects of climate change on the economy and so on, right? So what's really kind of different from the previous work, our work here, is really trying to look more on exploring uh, difference in the mix of energy uh, production and also the difference in, in the sectors and how the sectors are affected by the tax differently, right? And we are going to look not only to one country, we are going to look at six countries. We are going to do what's called a model-based simulation. We are going to you know, create a model. I'm going to be more precise about our model. And then we are going to, to, to uh, estimate you know, parameters of the model such that they are consistent with some moments that we observe in the data. And we are going to do this for Brazil, for Canada, China, India, Mexico and the United States, right? So this is, you know, kind of uh, uh, trying to, 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 to guide you where, where we want to reach, you know, what, what's really kind of behind the model. So think about, you know, uh, the different mix of energy production. So this is a hydroelectric uh, plant in, in Brazil. 70% of electricity generate, the electricity generated in Brazil is from hydro, hydro plants and, and, this is a solar plant in, in Arizona. And you know, this is, those are two kind of examples of fossil fuel energy production. And you can see that the emissions are completely different. And the countries are very different on, on, on how you know, they use this different mix of, of energy. 
And not only that, the counties are very different also on the sectors of production, right? In, in the importance of agriculture, in the importance of manufacturing, the importance of service or high tech service, right? So these, those are very different. And how the sectors use energy is also very different. And this is really what we are trying to explore here in this paper, right? So think about more kind of the model and be more precise. So this is a model where agents are very, very different, different in, in abilities for different tasks. Uh, they are also different in education. So this is, there are lots of heterogeneity on the individual side, but there are also lots of heterogeneity in, in the production, right? So this is a multi-sector uh, uh, model with what's called input-output linkage because goods are not only produced to final consumption, but they are also used in the production of the other goods, including energy. So we are going to look at the four types of energy, uh, oil, coal, natural gas, and green. And, and that's basically, you know, in the end, we have basically 18 sectors of production in, in our model, right? So this is kind of the model. So be more precise. So think about these workers, workers, the supply, they label to the very different sectors and energy, also uh, supply labeled to energy, to the energy sector and energy is, you know, uh, supplied is used by very different sectors. And you can see here, there's very little error. You can think about also the goods being used uh, for different sectors also as input in production, right? And these generate what's, you know, kind of the aggregate output of the economy. Think about this as GDP, right? So there are also, you know, the agents, they also consume, they are not only supply, but they also consume the goods and consume the energy and so on. And uh, what we are going to do in this paper, we are going to basically introduce a carbon tax and the carbon tax, uh, the energy are very different in the way that they emit uh, uh, carbon to uh, carbon emission. And basically we are going to introduce, uh, you know, uh, a tax that's going to vary by the intensity of emission of each uh, energy uh, type. And this is going to affect a location effect, right? How the workers are going to be allocated, how the production is going to be uh, allocated. And this is going to generate some economic effect. And this is basically the question, right? The core of our paper is really trying to address the aggregate and distribution effects of, of a carbon tax, okay? So, but how are we are going to do this, right? So let's go to the quantitative part. We are first going to be guided by the Paris Agreement. So what's going to be the level of tax, right? So basically we are going to estimate within the model a tax level such that the emission, the there is a reduction in emission consistent with the Paris Agreement. And that's about 26% for 2030. And, and the carbon tax that uh, uh, generates at least for the US in this case here is about 32% carbon tax, okay? So this is this carbon tax, uh, we are going to introduce these varies by, by, by energy type, uh, and we are going to introduce this in this very different energy type, right? And we are going to apply this tax for these different, uh, the remaining five economies, or we are going to do uh, a different exercise. We are going to actually estimate for each economy also a level of tax such that the emission is reduced by the same amount, which is the 20% of each of the countries, right? And then there are the revenues from the tax, right? So the tax, there are tax, and then there are revenue. And there are different ways that we can get back the tax on, into the economy. This is what's called the wasteful spending, thinking about this worst scenario. And this is really kind of this revenue is really just to pay the bureaucrats and that is not really, you know, they are not coming back to, to the economy. Or we can subsidize uh, energy, uh, the green energy, or we can subsidize uh, uh, public infrastructure, or we can subsidize education. Okay, so there are, those are the different scenarios that we are going to use to, to, to understand the aggregate uh, implications and, and allocation effects of, of a carbon tax, okay? So given that, let's go straight to, to kind of uh, the results. Right, so the results here, you can see, so this is a 32% tax applied to each of these, these six economies, right? You can see that they are very effective to reduce emission, right? So this is reduction in emission, these, these uh, light gray bars. And 
here you I will highlight, say, China in the US. So you can see that this is a high reduction in emission in China because the intensity of, 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 of fossil fuel energy is higher, say, in China than in the US, and also how the sectors use energy is very different in China than in the US. And then you can see here on, on this, this bar here, so this would be the, the aggregate effects on GDP, right? So that's minus 2.1%. In China, and this is minus 0.6 percent. The other one is a welfare measure that we have a utility of a preference, and and depends on the specification. So I would not spend much time on that. Okay, but that would be say the economic aggregate effect would be the minus 21, uh, minus 2.1 percent, minus 0.6 percent uh, for the U.S. One point here: this is the waste of waste for spending, right? So this is, as I said, the the worst case scenario that we have in our model would be this the scenario that you know the revenue we don't do anything with the revenue that are generated from the tax. Okay, so we can do the the different exercise. We can basically instead of say imposing the same tax for U.S. and China, uh, we can basically try to estimate what would be the tax in China such that reduction is the same in China as in the US. And the, the tax rate would be, instead of being 32%, it's going to be 25%, right? So it's going to be uh, actually smaller. And then the economic effects in China, instead of being minus 2.1% of GDP, it's going to be minus 1.5% of GDP. Just, you know, kind of to give a little bit of comparison, during the pandemic, the US GDP, the, you know, fall by 3.5% uh, roughly, right? So this is, you know, kind of just to put in perspective the type of, uh, you know, uh, loss that we are thinking about here, right? So this would be uh, in the China would be 1.5%. And when you introduce this, the same tax rate, that would be 2.1%, okay? So as I said, you can do very different things with, with the money, with the resource coming from the revenue. One is the wasteful spending. That's the case that I just described here, uh, the minus 0.6%. But you can also subsidize education, for instance. right? And if you subsidize education and human capital, you can see that instead of having a, a, a loss in GDP, you can actually have, in the long run, a gain in GDP. So that would be 0.4%. Okay. And the other ones, you know, you can see that's always uh, smaller than the wasteful spending here, right? And that would be the, the, the change in consumption and also uh, the change in welfare, okay? So we have these four other countries, but given time, I'm going to actually keep going. And what I'm going to explore here is really uh, the rich, richness of the model, which is really this difference in, in the production structure of the economy and how they use fossil fuel energy and the intensity of use of energy. So this is applying the same tax, but now instead of looking at the aggregate effect, I look at sectoral effects. And this is also the waste for spending here. So you can see that energy sector is going to be really uh, affected by this. So this is a change in, in 4.4%. 5% of production in the energy sector. But you can see that all the sectors are going to be, how they are going to be affected is going to be very different uh, across sector. And this depends on not only how they use energy, but also how they use sectors that use a lot of energy, right? So this is, you know, depending on the, on the production structure of the economy. So this is uh, the waste of spending for the US. And think about here uh, the, what's called the useful spending is when we subsidize, say, public infrastructure and so on. So you can see that all the sectors that were negatively affected are now positively affected by this, this policy because you create public infrastructure, you, you increase productivity in some sectors, you know, these compensate the fall uh, in, in production compared to the wasteful spending, right? So energy sector is still, you know, kind of very hard hit by the policy, right? But you can see that other sectors can actually improve in terms of GDP relative to a waste of spending, right? So this is US and China. You can see also, this is also for the waste, waste of spending for China and the US. You can see that the effect would be much larger for, the, for some sector in, in China than, than in the US, okay? Okay, so uh, to kind of uh, uh, show the, the, the last set of results that I have, 
I look at more the individual. Okay? So the, those are say aggregate effects and then sectoral effect, but let's look more at the individual level. And then at the individual level, something that I want to highlight, think about you know, individuals that are, 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 in, are working in, in energy production and fossil fuel energy production. And then you can see that uh, the facts on them in, in terms of welfare, in terms of consumption, is going to be quite large. This is about 13%, right? So for the waste for spend, this is the US. And you can see that the results are you know, kind of almost uniform if you look for all type of you know, uh, revenue back that we uh, simulate in the economy, either by the green subsidy or user for spending or education subsidy, you can see if there is not really a target policy to that specific sector, the policy is going to hurt them uh, quite high, right? And, and, but what you can see here, so this, this would be the effect on these agents. You can see also that the labor force participation, the fraction of these agents, you know, in the labor force is quite small, it's 0.4%, right, of the labor force. So the measure of individuals, the amount of individuals that are going to be affected by this policy and very strongly affected by this policy is relatively small. So the point is that there are ways that we can compensate these individuals and target some, you know, some, some transfer for these particular individuals. And we, of course, did this for the sixth economy, but I don't have really kind of time to show for the other economy, right? So concluding here, uh, uh, so this is a framework to study aggregate and distribution effects of climate change mitigation policy. This could be implemented for very different you know, uh, uh, policies, right? So it could be used for, for, for you know, uh, think about say cutting, cutting gas uh, supply from Russia and what would be the effects in the economy. So you could think about these uh, within this, this, type, this type of framework. So the model is really calibrated to disaggregated data for six countries. We try to really match you know, our labor force participation by sector, value added by sectors, and a bunch of characteristics by sectors whenever we, we estimate the model. And the, main, the key takeaway take from our exercise is that in general, we have really kind of relatively, at least was surprising for us, relatively small aggregate effects to reach the Paris Agreement, right? The effects depends on, on a country sectoral composition, right? And there are, as I, shown, I have shown, important sectoral effects. And however, given you know, the aggregate effects really hide very important distribution effects and, and some workers might be really kind of a, a fact and, 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 and that's you know, a very important for the policymaker to try to think about compensation of, of the workers that are going to be mainly affected by the policy. Okay, so thank you very much. And that's all, and I wait for your questions.